thank you so much for joining. Uh, delighted to have you for this Epando Days information event, which is preparatory to the launch of our uh, 2022 season. My name is Eugene Shirley. I'm the president of Pando Populous, which is a nonprofit education organization that is behind Pando Days. Today's event is for people who've not been part of the Pando Days program in the past, but are interested in knowing what it's all about and how they might become a part. So thank you all very much for joining. By the way, I should say that we're recording today's session as we expect uh, new interest in Pando Days over the next month. And we wanted to make sure that this informational session would be easily available for those uh, uh, who roll along over the next four weeks and are interested in joining and want to catch up with what we've done today. With me are a number of Pando Days colleagues, Alexi Karakatsios, Betsy Hunter, Catherine Miller, who, has, who is heavily involved in Pando Days and was until fairly recently the uh, Chief Sustainability Officer of the Conrad Hilton Foundation, and Judith Parker, whom you'll be hearing from shortly. Like I've said, this is an informational event uh, with only a couple of short presentations and then leaving lots of time for Q&A. We want to make sure that by the time you leave, you know everything there is to know, so to speak, about Pando Days and how you can get involved. So first, very briefly about Pando. For those of you who don't know, Pando is an LA County-based organization that's focused on civic engagement at the intersection of education and public agencies. We have Pando Days for Higher Ed. We have a project uh, for water and power sustainability in collaboration with LADWP called Magenta House for K-12. We do professional development in collaboration with the county's chief sustainability officers. And we're in the midst of creating a campus opportunity to facilitate our work at the 10 acre location in Encino, that's the site of the Sisters of Social Service. So Pando, Pando Populous is the full name of our organization. And uh, you have to wonder why the funny name. Pando is the name, as you may know, of the largest organism on earth. It's a one tree forest is the way I like to describe it. It is a single tree with 47,000 trunks spread over 110 acres in South Central Utah. These 47,000 expressions of that one tree been there for thousands of years, and, but it's all the same tree. And we always thought that it was just a wonderful symbol and wonderful expression of what our uh, vision of the world is, of a kind of radical interconnectedness of uh, uh, people, people with the rest of what's here on earth, plants and animals, and then also the kind of radical interconnection between um, disciplines, academic disciplines. So what Pando Days then is, it's the flagship program of Pando that brings colleges and universities together from across the California Southland to focus on implementing the LA County sustainability goals. Those goals are enshrined in the document, Our County LA. You can find it at ourcountyla.gov. It is interesting the county's plan because it is it has been called and i think reasonably so the most ambitious regional sustainability plan in the country and the reason why it's called that is because it of the way that it brings together justice with sustainability it sees it sees all that whole range of issues as essentially being being one and wraps it up into a sustainability plan and for that reason it's so ambitious but it's also time for all hands on deck in implementing the plan. And so those who are involved in Pando Days are really part of the hands. So we conceive Pando Days as a way of focusing the intellectual and creative talents of the region's higher educational institutions on our biggest problems for the place we call home and love as filtered through the Our County LA plan. Every year, colleges and universities devote full courses, studios, or labs in the fall term 
on innovating and developing their Pando Days projects with solutions that are then showcased at the end of each year. Pando Days uh, is conceived as operating on two tracks. One is as a learning experience. The other is to develop and deliver real world solutions for on the ground change in local communities. We're not a funding source to speak of, but we do bring projects together with the right partners for funding to develop community partnerships, the right partners with government, et cetera. To date, we've had 23 Pando Days projects developed at more than a dozen higher educational institutions. Those take in the range from Caltech, LA Trade Tech, USC, uh, UCLA, Cal Poly Pomona, Cal State Northridge, Cal State Long Beach, Cal Arts, Otis. I'm sure I'm missing some, but you get the range. And we're reaching out uh, to all 50 plus colleges and universities. Pando Days projects get developed at any of the schools and are defined by their innovation, their focus on tackling big challenges in their communities, and their focus on creating actionable, achievable solutions. We like to think of those as small bets. Some examples uh, uh, early on, um, UCLA developed a wonderful project on biodiversity, which then afterward it's now going up in Encino, uh, which uh, which the Mellon Foundation came in on and started supporting. Uh, last year, USC developed a, a wonderful suite of solutions over a course focused on Skid Row. Woodbury also focused a project on Skid Row. Which was, which was less ambitious in its scope, but was about using ancient technology for cooling um, at the, uh, to help mitigate the heat island effect uh, that Skid Row is unfortunately so known for. Uh, Cal Arts and LA Trade Tech were very much involved uh, with, heavily involved with projects at Pico Union. Cal, uh, Cal State Long Beach gave us uh, some unexpected insight and a great project, which is now moving forward with LA County. You can read all about these um, on the website where we have all of the projects uh, that were done over the last few years archived there. So how does Pando Days work? Every year we go out with an announcement in the spring like this one to let people know what's coming and to talk about how the Pando Day season will unfold. We reach out to more than 50 colleges and universities, as I said, throughout the Southland and are very eager for a highly diverse reach. We ask anyone who's interested to submit a short description of what they'd like to do. Those descriptions uh, vary from a paragraph to not more than a page about their Pando Days project, which will move forward in some fashion in the fall. My colleague Judy, Judith Parker is happy to work on these descriptions uh, with those who'll be making the submission. These are due May 27. In June, we get back to all who've made submissions and announce those who've been accepted, which we plan to be roughly a dozen or so projects from as many colleges and universities. Team leads of those projects are then named Pando Fellows for the fall term and are given honoraria of $1,500 apiece as our way of helping to support the leads as they tailor fall term courses, studios, or labs to deliver their Pando Days initiatives. Often existing courses or studios are shaped to meet Pando Days objectives. At times, something wholly new is created. It's up to the instructors as uh, to whether to take an existing course and craft it that way or to do something new, which would be appropriate, for instance, for a lab. We help the process along with a brainstorming event that we host in early September with John, John Bielenberg and his colleagues who are uh, probably legendary, it's safe to say, in the design thinking field. And we get everyone together to the extent that's possible and have a wonderful day of, of brainstorming on the projects. 
We'll then be hosting a couple of salon events this year that focus on critical content related to Southland sustainability. The projects then that you develop will premiere in early December, followed by a finale. The importance of the finale is not only that it's a chance to celebrate all your great work, but that it brings teams together with stakeholders and those whom we feel can probably help make a difference in getting projects launched, such as funders, community partners, government people, et cetera. Part of what Pando Days is all about is, as I said, a learning experience for all involved. But part is about delivering real world solutions that can go to work improving the place we call home. And so the people we bring to the finale are those who can help you get your projects launched in the real world. We also offer small cash prizes, which we hope can be used as seed funding to help push the most innovative of the projects um, along as uh, they can be, far, far along as they can be. You'll find out everything on our website. Betsy Hunter, my colleague, uh, she'll put into the chat uh, the Pando Days 22 webpage and also a link for what we call a How It Works document, which outlines the process and gives a schedule and all this. It's all pretty simple and straightforward. The idea is that we want to give you every possible resource we can to focus the creative and intellectual resources of the county, which you represent on improving the Southland according to the our county LA goals. So that's essentially what Pando Days uh, is in brief. Like I say, we'll open this up for Q&A, uh, plenty of time for that at the end, but that's really the end of what, what I have to say in terms of uh, big picture understanding of the process. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Judith Parker, who will be talking with you about Pando Days 22 and the specific challenges nested within the, our county LA goals, the specific challenges that will be opening up uh, for, Pando Bay, for Pando Days 22 and its neighborhood focus. Judith uh, has been working with us on Panda Days from the very beginning. She's an Emmy award-winning uh, uh, writer and producer of uh, movies of the week and television series here in Los Angeles, who's now working with us uh, in developing the Panda Days project and is as a resource to all of those who are working on their project descriptions. Uh, she's a resource to all of you to uh, help uh, uh, craft projects and craft the storytelling. Judith, uh, over to you. You want to just talk briefly about the challenges for this year and also about the neighborhood focus of those challenges. We need her to unmute. Judith, we need you to unmute. Sorry. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what your process would be, the, the steps you would take to arrive at a Pando Days project and, and the importance of narrative. It's, you know, it, it is my trade, um, but it is also my passion. I think that the way we communicate our world, our feelings, our emotions, that expression through narrative takes many forms, visual design and verbal and many others. But in the case of a small bets project, a Pando Days project, the form it takes is both intellectual in that you will have a, a goal from the LA County, you will have a goal for the course, you will have a, an intention as um, professors and students, but there's under all of that is the narrative, is how you tell it, how you describe this what form it will take both on paper as a summary and finally as a presentation. And I think it's really important out of the gate to be thinking about how it's going to look. And so what we've done this, this time around, having learned from our past experience, we've decided to 
focus on the neighborhood. And the neighborhood we're talking about is the five mile radius around your campus. The neighborhood where you work, the neighborhood where some of you live, um, the neighborhood that touches on your physical space. What are the problems there that relate to the goals in our county LA? What will you find within that five mile radius that needs a solution? And we're not super strict about this. Um, if a goal feels like it doesn't fit your neighborhood and you wanna go travel 25 miles, okay, that's fine. We're not gonna say no, but there are problems in every neighborhood, there really are. There are environmental problems, there are resiliency problems, there are all kinds of problems um, in equity and distribution of wealth and climate. So we think you'll probably find something that fits your needs and speaks to your neighborhood. Ultimately, we have our own not so secret goal of engaging you with that neighborhood, getting you involved with that community, bringing a project to the neighborhood that actually fits the space and makes a difference. So let me just tell you what we've done. We've opened up the challenges. We've opened them up very deliberately so that they embrace lots of issues. And the first is habitat. You'll see all this on the website but I just wanna flush it out a little for you. Habitat could be your habitat. It could be the campus quadrangle. It could be the birds. It could be wildlife. It could be coyotes. It could be anything. Any living, breathing being or animal that needs a home. Um, climate is the next one and weather comes to mind, of course, but there's also agriculture and water and air and all the essentials that we need to enrich our lives to live well. And then comes spirit. And that's kind of a new one for us and we're excited about it. It's the arts, it's the healing arts, it's faith, dance, mindfulness, all the creative arts that enrich our lives. The fourth is health, medicine, alternative medicine, food as medicine, new delivery systems, apps. It could be any number of things relating to that field, those fields. And then the very last is communication. And again, there's apps and talk and media and new tech and old tech and news and false news and outreach to kids at risk and cyber attacks. It's all of it. And God knows we are surrounded by media. And if you can solve that one, we'll all be really grateful. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's kind of it. And, and my role here, I think my critical role here is to help you find the story that tells that will best present your project. Your academics, you know what you wanna do, you're going to do it brilliantly and you're going to find a way to define the problem and the solution, but you may not know how to tell the story behind it. And just to give you an example of that, and then I'm gonna be done talking. Um, the PICO Union project we had last time around, there were, such diverse approaches to this project. It was, it's a 2,400 square foot block of concrete at the moment that is to be turned into a park for the community. And as Eugene has, has, has said many times, there's two gangs, one on either side of the park. I mean, this is, this is a piece of real estate that has been completely left behind. One project, Trade Tech, came up with a, an approach to a computer program where the, the people in the neighborhood, like paper dolls, would move things around and define the park. That was their visual representation of their concept, which was to bring the community to defining the park. But CalArts, on the other hand, saw all the broken concrete as an opportunity to fill it in with gold paint and create a dance space where people would perform and people from the neighborhood would bring their instruments and it would be a transitional approach because it'll take years to get the park up. What, what Shannon 
at Cal Arts and her group wanted to do was create something as a transition that would have bring real beauty to the neighborhood. They couldn't be more different and they're both terrific. And, and that's, that's all I have to tell you, but just by way of explaining that the narrative in both cases was so different, it told a different story. So it, I'm here to help you and there'll be lots of links and chat things and stuff so that you can find me. And, and I hope to hear from all of you and I know you'll do great projects. Thanks so much, Judith. Uh, so let's open it up to questions that anyone has uh, on anything big or uh, very specific and concrete. I think what you can see is essentially what Pando Days as a program is, is a curricular framework with supporting resources to uh, uh, help focus, like say the county's intellectual and creative talent on this place that we call home. And so we're wanting to offer those resources and develop them out however best we can in really a working collaboration with you all to be able to meet that goal. So um, we're a small group. Uh, by the way, I should say that, that we, did, we did not invite uh, the schools that have participated in the past because they've already uh, been around the block on this, you know essentially what's going on. And uh, we have a number of schools that are interested uh, but that weren't able to join today. And so we just thought, well, let's go ahead and, and with what we have, we'll record it and we'll reach out to people individually otherwise. Uh, is whoever has a call, has uh, a question of any kind, please feel free just to unmute and, and, and ask it. David? Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is David. I'm a faculty at a Santa Monica College in the architecture program there. And I'll be teaching Great. at the studio uh, uh, in the fall. Um, and I was wondering if there's uh, some sort of information maybe on the website, which maybe I haven't clicked on every link yet, but regarding the, the resources um, that, that you've kind of mentioned, um, specifically, like, for example, on the finale event, the stakeholders, government, uh, investors, it'd be great to kind of um, get a sense of what, what the network um, kind of kind of maybe or or you know i'm sure that's always evolving but um <clears throat> essentially i think it's a i think this is you know a really unique uh program uh very interesting to give students you know even even a higher sense of purpose um when when they're working uh throughout the semester and um yeah it would i think it would help to to know a little bit more about about what those resources are okay um Right, a couple of these comments down. Um, thank you very much for that. So, uh, uh, actually, what and, and the thing I was writing down, we certainly need to make sure that the specific answer to your question is plainer on the website. It's an extremely good question, and we've left it more implied. Uh, but I can answer this way the first thing to take on board is that we are producing this in consultation with the office of Gary Giroux, who's the chief sustainability officer for LA County. And that's a meaningful collaboration that we have with his office. And so he has he has been very generous in, in opening up connections and opportunities and all this. Also, it is a project of the chief sustainability officer task force for LA County, Catherine as a uh, former CSO of the Hilton Foundation uh, is one of the members of that. There are about 70 members. And these are the CSOs of, uh, from government, higher ed, and businesses, and NGOs within the county. And so that essentially forms the kind of fundamental network base that we have. And so it's from that base then that we have that uh, what we do is reach out to essentially tailor make opportunities, uh, you know, in terms of where we think projects might be able to move forward. 
uh, this last year, we're working very closely with the mayor's office on anything around homelessness. We were working with Los Angeles County itself on anything around transportation. We worked with Peace, Pico Union Housing Corporation, an NGO on the Pico Union project specifically, and with then with the CSO, the Chief Sustainability Officer Task Force, uh, in terms of a couple of projects having to do with food. And um, uh, so that's the, that is the resource that we draw upon. And uh, this kind of matchmaking is something that uh, those on the team have done, done a lot of. So we're pretty, pretty good at whenever we know that there's this kind of need of scrounging around and being able to do whatever we can to connect people in the right way. Um, for the UCLA project, a couple of years ago, we pulled in the, Hill, the um, Mellon Foundation uh, for a SciArc project, uh, they on their own pulled in Google as a funding source for uh, the project that they had developed through that. And so all that, those kinds of connections tend to be more ad hoc and talking with the key, um, key people on the team and just kind of figuring out what is, what is the capability for moving forward and then what are the best ways of going about and supporting that. Let me interject that though we're not funding out of the gate, once we know what you're doing and we see the shape and scope of the project, that will give us the impetus, that will give us the information we need to move forward to help. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. What other question might there be? Catherine, you have participated also on the other side of things as a judge. Uh, is there anything that you think that that either from your own experience with this or just from hearing the presentations today that you think it would be helpful to highlight? You know, Eugene, I think you covered it really well. And Judith, you, you as well. And thank you very much. And um, I think as, you know, I, I look at this program and, and yeah, I have participated as a judge and also giving, um, you know, some advisory support um, with some of the programs, um, is that this is an amazing opportunity for higher ed and student involvement to give back to their community, as well as developing more um, in a deeper insight and understanding and connection with their local community as well. Um, the creativity that has come with the projects that you know have been introduced to date have been incredible. And as Judah said, you know, has ranged, it's taken on a full range of um, uh, you know, coverage of various different, you know, types of opportunities. I, I remember the first one I, I saw was Carsick, the USC did, which was amazingly creative. You know, they did, um, a, 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 and Eugene, correct me if I'm wrong too, my memory here, is that they really provided like a, a training on, you know, the, the, the drive on the 10 going from you know, USC to, or excuse me, the Winton from USC to Pasadena and kind of telling the story of the community of which they were driving through. And, you know, I just thought even from that angle, it's very, very creative. Um, so again, it's a really great opportunity to bring higher ed and students together to help solve problems for our county and our communities here in Southern California. Great, great, uh, thanks. Yeah, CARSIC is, is a great project which uh, was targeting uh, the K-12 arena. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so which suggests the the range of projects that have been dreamed up under the Panda Days umbrella. By the way, just to make it easy, uh, I am, I have just put in the chat right there. Uh, if you want to look and see what 
Pando Day's projects of the past have been, you can look at that and scroll through and uh, get some ideas. You know, Eugene, I guess I also want to, you know, interject here is it's an opportunity, this program to bring about great and representation from a very diverse, you know, um, range of schools, um, diverse range of students, um, you know, the, the range of, of from the social side to the economic side to um, you know everything in between, and we really would like to to help support that diversity this year as well. And I, I would just like to interject that when you're looking at Pando projects from the past, um, just be aware that the the focus has changed. The first year was all schools doing the same thing repurposing the junk on the campus. The second year was a, what we called open call. So any goal from the LA County, um, our county LA's goals, anything could be embraced. Last time we had very specific challenges in specific locations with the specific intentions. And, and what you're about to embark on, which I think is, you know, Pando point two, <laughs> uh, point four um, is is a whole new approach, which are these five areas of interest within the range of your campus. Just so we don't confuse you, that this is this year's Pando days, and it's and it's important to make the distinction. They've all been wonderful, but this year's challenges are pretty broad and probably will embrace problems and solutions that you will find interesting. And also that haven't been embraced before uh, within the Pando Days lineup. So are there any additional questions? Otherwise, we'll we'll go ahead and, and wrap up. But I want to make sure that since we're all here, that we have the opportunity to answer anything that anyone may have. Well, I have a question. Um, my name is George Letty. I'm the uh co-director of the Sustainable Environment Institute at the LACCD. Our district is actually nine campuses as well as some other facilities. If we wanted to propose a project, um, uh, would, could we do it in, in terms of district wide or would it have to be anchored in one particular campus? No, uh, uh, I, I think it could be wonderful to do you know some kind of uh intercollegiate here all of you within the same district but some kind of intercollegiate project in that way it would uh so whatever you felt that you had the bandwidth to be able to uh, do we'd be delighted to support i know um one of the one of the advantages of pando days and also with pico union with the pico union project last year one of the things the three teams that were not part of the same district at all but one of the things that they really enjoyed was was a kind of intercollegiate opportunity focused on a specific challenge they all approached it from different perspectives but they they were able to work together in different ways um so we do have a couple of models that we could talk with you about uh, where to the extent that something similar, not the same, but similar to what you're proposing has worked. But in any case, I uh, would be delighted to uh, uh, talk with you about what you're suggesting. Thank you. I had a quick question. My name is Javier. Um, I also teach with David at San Monica College, the architecture program. Um, regarding the dates, uh, I'm sure this might be somewhere on the websites, but when is the deadline for proposals and when would the instructors be notified that they are one of the 12? So the date is uh, May 27, just a month, month from today. We're not asking for anything um, elaborate on that. We'd be really quite short. We just want to, you know, have a have a sense of what you want to do. We are asking that people work with us, work with Judith in uh, constructing that just so that it is something of a dialogue, you know, 
We have uh, a format for that, Eugene. We've got kind of a format down. Oh, yeah. That we can help you with. It's a very specific format that just defines the need, the proposed solution, and what the project will look like. And I'm I'm here to help you with that. So it's it's on the website, I believe. And then you'll be notified in early June. So very fast turnaround. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else, we'll wrap up. Uh, give one more open call opportunity for anyone to ask anything further. Um, Betsy, do you mind putting my email address in here so people could just reach out easily? And if it is something that should go to somebody else, like Catherine or Judith or whatever, I'll be happy to forward it on. But please feel very free to reach out. Um, so I, from the, from the comments we've heard today, uh, it certainly seems to me exciting. I would be delighted for you to form teams, you could work alone or collaborate with others in the way that we've talked. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, seeing what kinds of projects for Los Angeles County you might be able to dream up. Uh, thank you all again for joining us. Uh, thanks much to my colleagues for making Pando Days possible. Uh, have a great afternoon.